Okay, in this video I'm going to talk about how to do X scaling. So there's two ways of doing this. Um, the first way I'm going to show you is through using the background. So you bring in an image that is... The width is 476, the height is 297. Alright, so what this is trying to basically um, solve maybe um, space is issues with bringing in a large object. So this is another way you could um, reduce your, you know, your how much you have, how much space you have on your app, you know, or, or off, you know, the installer program for Windows. So this is the save space, save time, I guess, or space for the most part. So um, this image is that size, right? And so uh, in your backgrounds, you select the BG underscore one image, right? And so all you do is go here and click on stretch. Now it stretches it out to a full full scale of the image um, size of the background. The size of the background is set by 3300 by 1991. And you can see here that it's full screen. But if you go into your backgrounds and uncheck the stretch, then it's going to make it only up there. Uh, actually, you can't see it right there, see? In the corner. So that's one way to do it. The next way of doing it um, is to take out the background, make it blank, and then you want to drag, go to your objects, and then drag in your uh, object image and put it in the corner. You might be able to put it right here too, I don't know. And then press the play. Okay, you don't want to put it there. Put it in the corner up here. And you can change your snap X and Y coordinates to, I don't know, something that is going to snap more to the, the location of your corner. Because if you do like maybe one or, you know, if you change this to one, one, then you're really going to have to really be very, very tediously moving your mouse very closely to the, the top there. So if you go to 1-1, one, one, you're going to really like really have to get up there exactly. And that's kind of time consuming. So you want to choose a number that's going to match the area real quick so you can snap in there. In there. You don't have to worry about it taking too, too much time. So it snaps in there up at the corner there. Then you press arrow, play it, and see it stretches it out. Now it's not exactly the full screen, but you can adjust that number. And the way you do that, how you scale it, is in your object image, do a create event and that event, then drag over a coded sheet, and then you want to use your X and Y scaling to change the numbers. So I had five, five, so maybe make this, um, I don't know, six, six. So this, this way is a little more tedious, but you're dealing with an object versus the background so um, like I said if you want to bring in an image that's kind of small and then and scale it up you know you can do that but you know to a certain degree and before it starts getting blurry so I'm talking about a maybe like a bad guy image like an object that moves back and forth and shoots shoots something at, sh at the character and you, you find out if you you know, designed it in Photoshop that, oh, the object's too small. Um, I didn't adjust it right. So you can use the X and Y scale to scale it up um, and make it a little larger so you don't have to go back to Photoshop and redesign it. Um, so this is the way you can do it. So I'm going to do 6-6 six, six and see what happens. So 6-6, six, six, it, it's still, it's not fully see it's not fully so you have to you know adjust it again to maybe like I don't know make it 8 and now it's pretty much full screen but it does cut off some of the image and you can you can tell that it's kind of blurry it's not that crisp but like I said, um, you're probably not going to um, scale it to the full screen, of course. 
So you just gotta play around the numbers to get it exactly the way you want it. That still cuts it off, but it, it's pretty close. But you see what I'm talking about. So, like I said, you design an image, you design a bad guy or your character, and you find out that the image is way too small in Photoshop, and you don't want to redesign your character or the bad guy in the enemy again in Photoshop. So one way of doing that is you can use the X and Y scaling to scale up your image, um, horizontal and vertical, to make them a little bit larger. And um, as long as you don't scale it up too much, then he'll still look kind of crisp and clean looking. Um, also, being, uh, also note that if you do a you know character or you do a bad guy image and then you know you, you shoot him so many times you hit him so many times he's going to turn into a different image correct show him that he's dead pretty much so you want to do the same thing with the x and y scale you want to make sure it's the same height and width as your character or your enemy that way it doesn't look too small i mean that's i guess you know what i'm saying so if you design your enemy or your your character small and then your the explosion part you design that small then you want to make sure that both the explosion and the character is the the correct x and y scale otherwise it's going to look weird when you shoot the enemy or the bad guy or the character itself and then he's small versus you know the character himself or the enemy it doesn't match up so you want to make sure that both the x and y scale is the same on both the character and when the character dies or the enemy or the enemy dies, make sure the X and Y scale is the same height and width. That way it looks, you know, equal in size. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, I just wouldn't scale it too high, because if you scale it too high, you'll start seeing it being blurry. So this is kind of a way to save time as well as space on your, your game. So you can bring in, you know, import images that are small, and then you can use the X and Y scale to scale it up, which will save time and space so yeah you would just have to keep adjusting these numbers to get it exactly right um, doing dealing with the object or if it's for a background then you can um, you know then you go to your backgrounds of course and then it's all you have to do in your backgrounds is to go to stretch or if you want to use the height and vertical you can do that too see so you bring in your image go to t tile horizontal then it horizontal it goes horizontal the, the image goes horizontal or if you want it tile vertical it goes vertical if you do both it'll do both so it, tile horizontal and vertical or you can basically stretch the image but then you'll notice that it's going to be blurry a little bit it's not going to be that clear it depends on how big your image was originally if you make your image a little bit bigger and then stretch it, it might be a little more clear. You know, it depends on the resolution. Alright, so that will conclude this video on how to stretch an image background or how to stretch an object. Thanks for watching.